Good evening. We're only days away from the Global Entrepreneurship Summit, meant to be hosted or co-hosted by Kenya and the United States, bringing together over 4,000 entrepreneurs in the country. Big opportunity for Kenya and the rest of Africa. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. It's time for business. The Special Senate Committee on Kenya Airways has said that the national airline's current state is attributable to mismanagement. The committee, led by Kisumu Senator Anyang Nyongo, says that its inquest into the airline has revealed a chain of decisions that have impacted KQ's performance negatively over the last few years, hence the huge losses. KTN's Charles Kitonga reports. Kenya Airways' flight into turbulent times seems far from over, at least according to the Special Committee of the Senate. The senators have been conducting inquiries into the airline's current state in a bid to uncover the reasons for KQ's declining fortunes. The committee has faulted several key decisions made by its management in recent years, including the 10-year strategy to expand the airline's fleet called Project Mawingu, saying it has crippled the farm. Project Mawingu sought to increase KQ's fleet to 119 modern aircraft covering 115 routes by 2021 at a cost of 300 billion shillings. This was to happen amid a retrenchment drive that would tame the company's runaway wage bill which had doubled in size between 2007 and 2012. This initiative did not run well with either the pilots or, or, or the cabin crew. Uh, the pilots felt that retrenching some of their members while also acquiring a new, fl new, new fleet was not rational. KQ's management also opted to outsource cabin crew members to reduce rising overhead costs. However, the Senate committee says the company did not recoup any gains from this move. Moreover, KQ management is accused of employing too many foreigners. According to the committee, 600 out of KQ's 4,000 employees are foreigners much higher than those in international carriers such as KLM and British Airways, a fact that has contributed to bad blood with local pilots and other workers. The Senate committee is also taking issue with the financing model chosen for acquiring KQ's new fleet. In 2013, KQ signed a 10 billion shillings loan agreement with Citibank and JP Morgan, repayable in 12 years, and an additional 13.5 billion shillings financing from a Fredzin bank, raising the airline's debt to 89 billion shillings. Ask the airline to provide us with documentary evidence of each arrangement that have made since 1996 for, for, us, for us to evaluate the rationale behind choosing one form of financing from the other. On top of this, the senators are questioning the three-year fuel hedging contract signed in 2009, which was expected to strategically position the airline against rising international fuel prices by locking its purchase price at $90 per barrel. Unfortunately, oil prices have since then declined, hitting a low of $43 per barrel last year, which has made KQ's pricing uncompetitive against regional carriers like Ethiopian Airlines, who have capitalized on this to increase their market share. We want to know what is the rationale for buying certain types of planes, putting them in certain routes, and uh, given the importance of the African market. The Senate committee is currently conducting public hearing into the state of KQ with management grilling sessions set to resume on Friday. Charles Gitonga, KTN News.